Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. Folks, I have to tell you, when I look at the Pennsylvania Railroad S2-6200, I see probably the most aesthetically pleasing locomotive I've ever seen. And let me know in the comments below what you think is the best looking locomotive you've ever seen. But for me, it's the S2, and it's really not all that close. Okay, so while the Pennsylvania Railroad was promoting its ill-fated duplexes, it also was experimenting with a turbine. In 1944, Baldwin and Westinghouse built a geared drive steam turbine Pennsylvania Railroad Class S2, and it was the only such machine ever built in North America. Except for the obvious lack of cylinders and valve gears and a few extra pipes and boxes here and there, this unique locomotive resembled a conventional reciprocating steam locomotive complete with connecting rods. The locomotive had a 686 wheel arrangement and it had a gigantic bell pair firebox and it had a 120 square foot grate. The locomotive weighed 580,000 pounds and delivered 70,500 pounds of tractive effort and also produced an estimated 6,000 horsepower. And although the S2 was intended as a dual service locomotive, it primarily operated in passenger service between Crestland, Ohio, and Chicago. It ran for only a few years and was withdrawn from service because of its high maintenance and fuel costs. So let's re rewind the clock a little bit and, and go to 1937. And that's when Baldwin and Westinghouse engineers got to working on applying steam turbine technology to steam locomotives. With the Second World War creating material shortages, there were some des design decisions that had to be made that would have been done differently in peacetime. Despite those issues, the Pennsylvania Railroad set out to create the most efficient steam locomotive ever made. The Pennsylvania Railroad made the decision to make the locomotive use a direct drive steam turbine, which meant there would be no need for a generator or traction motors as are found in diesel locomotives. But this idea required the fitting out of two turbines, one for the forward travel and another smaller one for going in reverse. The Pennsylvania Railroad wanted the S2 for high speed passenger service, but with the benefit of hindsight, I would probably say that the S2 would have done better and maybe even succeeded if it was a lower speed freight locomotive. So regardless, the S2 was conceived as a high-speed passenger locomotive that would, that would have been absolutely fantastic to see in action. So the S2 steam turbine made its debut in 1944, and it was a steam locomotive that sounded very, very different. Anecdotal stories had the sound of this locomotive instead of the chuff, 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 chuff noise that a steam locomotive would use. It made a more powerful whooshing noise, which was new and space age sounding. So at the head of a high speed inner city train, this was a locomotive that was easily capable of pulling a full load at over 100 miles per hour. And once it got over 40 miles per hour, it would do, do it more efficiently than the triple unit electromotive E7 diesel that would be needed to match its power. But at speeds below 30 to 40 miles per hour, however, it was a coal-hungry and water-thirsty machine. A steam turbine needs to be spinning at a set speed in order to be efficient. And basically, the design decision that had been made for the S2, the way that it was, they set that speed at 70 miles an hour. And that was a huge failing for the S2 overall. So operationally speaking, where the S2 had the most problems was actually starting a train. And that came from the steam turbine system itself. Because overcoming the initial resistance of a typical 20-car train and getting it moving will cause the boiler pressure of the S2 to drop from over 300 PSI to around 100 PSI. And this sudden drop created thermal problems in the firebox and failure of the stay, stay boats, which meant that the S2 spent much more time in the workshops instead of pulling trains. And after going through the system with a fine-toothed comb, it was discovered that the design was faulty and that a new design for boiler and the firebox would be needed. 
And really, once that was discovered for the Pennsylvania Railroad, they just decided that was going to be the final nail for the S2. And after only six years on the tracks, it was retired in 1949. And folks, I have to tell you, I think they retired the locomotive way too early because I think the problems could have been resolved. Now, I realize the Pennsylvania Railroad had a lot of money into this locomotive already, as it were, and it was very expensive to operate and such. But I really feel like it, that if they would have allowed Westinghouse to work out the boiler design and whatnot in the firebox, I think an answer would have been found for this locomotive, and I think it would have been a huge success thereafter. So I don't know how the Pennsylvania Railroad felt like there wasn't going to be any teething problems with this locomotive because it was a brand new design. It had never been tried before, and it was the only machine of its type in the country. But they made the decision that they did, and they terminated the program and the S2-6200 locomotive. So guys, let me know what you think. Would you have kept the uh, S2-6200 and fixed the problems, or would you have retired it? Let me know in the comments below. And this event with the S2 only further served notice that steam motive power was doomed and diesel locomotives were not just cheaper to run, but they required less staff to service and maintain them. So along with the locomotive's problems, I really think the S2 got retired because there was a rapid decline in the Pennsylvania Railroad's ridership for passengers uh, since 1947. And I really think that coincides as well with the withdrawal of steam from service and being replaced by diesels because they just, diesels just didn't have the personality that steam locomotives uh, had. And the general public, I think, lost interest in the railroads in general and just started taking cars or other methods to get to where they needed to be. And the last note that I will make about the S2 was in the 1950s, specifically the early 1950s, to tell you how beautiful this locomotive was, it was probably the most sought after model train from Lionel. And that was between 1946 and 1955. Just about every little kid wanted one of these locomotives. And that's just simply because steam locomotives have their own charm and personality that, that makes them second to none and diesels simply cannot match. And that's true to this very day. I think that's why all of us romanticize steam locomotives that much more over diesels. And one last thing to note about the S2 before I get to the specifications uh, was its service history. It basically ran the New York uh, to Chicago corridors of Broadway Limited. It ran the Liberty Limited, uh, the Trailblazer, the General, the Manhattan Limited, and the Golden Arrow on the route between Chicago and Crestline, Ohio. The S2 also hauled troop trains and was seen towing express freight trains. The Pennsylvania Railroad S2 number 6200 as an experimental prototype of a direct drive steam turbine locomotive ran 103,000 miles in total before it was completely withdrawn from service in August of 1949 and was soon away to Scrapper's Torch. The 6200 was eventually scrapped in Conway, Pennsylvania. And yet another historic steam locomotive was not preserved. So with that, the following specifications apply to the Pennsylvania Railroad's Steam Turbine 686 Class S2. So obviously the motive power was gas turbine. It was a 686 wheel arrangement. The lead truck wheel uh, diameter was 36 inches. The main drivers were 68 inches. And most interesting about this design was the trailing truck wheel diameters were 42 inches, which were larger than the leading truck di uh, diameter of 36 inches. So that's interesting. I don't think I've seen another locomotive like that. The overall length of the locomotive was 122 feet, seven and a quarter inches. The height of the locomotive was 16 feet. The adhesive weight was 271,450 pounds. The total locomotive weight was 1,032,100 pounds. That's including the tender. The fuel type was bituminous coal. Uh, the total water capacity was 19,500 gallons. The tender capacity itself was 37 and a half tons. The firebox grade area was 120 square feet. The boiler was a modified bell pair type, which was 102 inch diameter. Boiler pressure was 310 PSI. The 
feed water heater was a Worthington Corporation feed water heater. Maximum speed was at least 110 miles an hour. The power output on the forward turbine was 6,900 horsepower. The reverse turbine turbine had 1,500 horsepower, and the effective tra tractive effort was 65,000 pounds. And with that, we'll wrap up the video, and I shall thank you all for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button, and if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps the channel grow, both the likes and the subscribing. And turn on all of your notifications uh, so you can see everything that we upload. Also, visit our print shop at nickelplatelimited at etsy.com if you wish to help support the channel. And we thank you once again.